my voice to praise you My concrete heart won't stop me My concrete heart won't stop me I feel like it's the first time I feel like it's the first time Through joy and pain we worship With heart and soul wide open With heart and soul wide open Your strength will never fail us Your strength will never fail us morning discovery kids I hope you all are enjoying your summer break um, I know that I am loving being outside in this weather this is my favorite time of year um, I miss you all but I am hopeful and I am praying that we are all able to be together soon whenever that may be we don't know just yet but um, we hope it's soon do you all know what this is How about now? This is a chameleon. And if you look up the definition, um, a chameleon is a lizard that has the ability to change colors. So it does that so it can adapt to its surroundings. Um, the second definition though says, a person who changes their opinions or behavior based on the situation. So kind of the same as the lizard, it adapts to the surroundings that it may be in. Um, an example of that for you and me, um, maybe you have a few different groups of friends and not all together, they're separate and um, whichever group of friends you're with uh, depends on how you act or the things you say, the clothes you may wear, um, who you are changes whenever you're around certain people. So I think some of us can probably say that we've done that a time or two. Um, I know I can, especially when I was in middle school and high school, I had several different groups of friends. And I'm really glad I did because I learned a lot about myself by having those friends and figured out what some of my favorite things are. Um, but because they were all so different, I acted differently depending on who I was around. Um, I was a chameleon, just blending into what was around me. I was figuring out who I was at that time. I didn't know me fully just yet. I was learning. So who am I and what does that mean? When the new church started, they were on their own. 
with the help of their friend that we've been talking about, the Holy Spirit. Um, they, like us, struggled to understand who they were and what they were going to be and how they were going to live. So, will you all please read along with me in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, the Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple's court. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So this is after Pentecost and um, where the Holy Spirit was sent to help them um, to be with them as they were being sent out into the world. And Peter spoke to those around him about how the whole world would eventually come back to God um, through the Holy Spirit. When the people heard this message, they wanted to know what to do. And Peter said, repent, be baptized, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who accepted that message were baptized, and about 3,000 believers were added that day. So the problem here is that the new church, it's starting, and they're having to figure out all the little details of what that means. And part of that is who they are and how they're going to live. When it would be so easy to be like a chameleon, um, they have the Holy Spirit to be their comforter and their friend to help them. Uh, God's grace is so present here. Um, God is helping them live into their identity of who they are, um, who they're called to be. Jesus was their example for how they should live, through how he lived and loved others. The church was faithful and God was faithful to them. And this is still true for us in this time. We are trying to figure out who the church is and how we are going to live. We are trying to find our identity. We as a church don't decide how we should live. There aren't a list of roles that someone in an office sat down and just decided this is how we're going to operate. Um, we have the Bible and the Gospels and the Holy Spirit to help us. We have the examples of how Jesus lived and the ways in which he did things. Just like when the church was first starting, their identity was trying to be formed and they were trying to figure things out and they had the example that Jesus had set for them and we have that too um, through the Bible and the Gospels. Um, in this text, four big things stand out and it's in that first line, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So learning from others, fellowship, being with each other, eating together, praying together. Um, an example of how we do this would be our homecoming weekend celebration. So we all get together and we're learning and we are in fellowship with each other. We're together and we eat and we pray. And again, we're doing all of this together. So that's a great example um, for what this means. Um, in this text, it also talks about how they sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. Um, in this time, owning property was huge. Um, it was what made people who they were. That's where their identity lied in um, before their identity shifted over once they became believers. Um, owning land then made you someone. Um, and when Jesus came into the picture, that changed. Um, their identity went from the things that they owned um, to the way that they lived and the example they set um, in the image of God. All that had defined them before, um, all that made them who they were, they just gave it away to those that needed it. Um, this text also talks about the Lord adding to the number daily those who were being saved. Um, when numbers of followers and the number of people in and of the church is always interesting to know. Um, we're curious and um, other, we want others to join us 
um, to worship and live the lives that we know Jesus wants for us. But the numbers are not what matters. Um, the ways that we live, the learning from others, the fellowship we share in, the eating together, the praying together, that's what matters. Um, when we live faithfully to Jesus and the life that He has called us to live, others are drawn to that lifestyle and they want to be a part of it. So when we're kind and when we are giving to others and when we are more concerned about others than we are with ourselves and when we are committed to living the life that we've been called to, um, the one that God wants for us, others are drawn to that and they want to be a part of it. They want that joy that we are so easily able to give off because we have the Holy Spirit with us and that friend that is our comforter and our helper. Um, it, it becomes contagious and others want to be a part of it. So when we claim that we have these things and we act completely different, others may not want to be a part of it. Kind of like when someone is smelly like my youngest brother when he goes to football practice and he claims that he doesn't need to take a shower <laughs> uh, when he comes back and no one wants to sit beside him no one even really wants to be in the same room as him because he smells so bad <laughs> our actions can cause people to react in the same way and not want to be around us and not want to do the things that we're doing because it's kind of smelly in the same sense. Um, we want others to be drawn to us, not to move away because we smell bad. Um, same for the lives we live and who we are through Jesus. Um, when we devote ourselves to those teachings and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer and we are living the way God has called us to, others are drawn in. And we aren't doing this alone. Um, God's grace is so present. Um, God helps us to be who we are called to be um, because we aren't doing this any of this alone. Um, our friend who we've been talking about, the Holy Spirit, is with us always to help us do those things that may seem a little challenging at times. Would you all please join me in prayer? Dear Jesus, we love you and we are so thankful for this day and for this time that we are able to come together and worship you. Lord, we know that things are uncertain around us, um, but we also know that you are certain. We know that your spirit is with us, helping us and comforting us to be able to do the things that you have called us to do. Help us to follow the example that you set and gave for our lives to live and to love and to look like you so that others around us would want to do the same. Uh, Lord, be with my friends who are watching as our routines start to change little by little. We pray that we are able to be together again soon, all in your timing. Um, we love you and we thank you and we pray all of this in your name. Amen. Thanks guys for joining me today. Uh, I hope I'm able to see you soon and I hope you all have a wonderful week.